BTEC Applied Science Unit 3 Energy Content of Fuels How can we measure how much energy different fuels contains? So what is a fuel again? A fuel is a substance that releases heat energy when it is burned. When you burn a fuel combustion takes place and chemical potential energy is converted into heat energy. It's transferred into heat energy. Energy is measured in joules, which is capital J, and a thousand joules is one kilojoule. Uh, that is little k, capital J, one kilojoule. Now, that could be heat energy or any type of energy is measured in joules. There is another unit of energy that it mentions in the syllabus, and that is kilocalories. Now, one kilocalorie is about 4,184 joules, or 4.2 kilojoules. A kilocalorie is about 4.2 kilojoules. If you look at food labels, then they will tell you, for any particular food that you buy, uh, how many kilojoules of energy or how many kilocalories of energy it contains. Okay, One confusing thing is that on most food labels, it actually just says calories. If it says calories, then it actually means kilocalories. If it says this biscuit is 250 calories, it means kilocalories. These are the fuels that are mentioned in the specification. Uh, you might get a question involving any of these. Petrol, paraffin, food as a fuel, cooking oil, methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol, pentanol, and wax. If it's a, a liquid fuel, then the experiment will involve burning it in something called a spirit burner. And what you do is you weigh the spirit burner before the experiment, then you weigh it after, and then the difference in mass will tell you the mass of the fuel which has been burned. Uh, if it's a solid fuel such as food, it is a common experiment to, to be asked to actually find out how much energy food contains. You use a, a needle with a wooden holder. You set fire to the, to the food, for example, it might be a peanut or a what's it or whatever. You set fire to it in a Bunsen flame, then you put it under the boiling tube until it stops burning. Uh, you measure its mass before and after, and you note the temperature rise. Okay, how do we work out the energy released? Well, actually before that, uh, burning fuels can be hazardous. What are the problems with burning fuels? Well, fuels are flammable. Yeah, they burn. Uh, you've got to be careful with them. You don't want to burn your house down. Uh, they can be toxic in themselves, which means they can be poisonous. Uh, very often there's a risk of explosion. Uh, with liquid and gases, there's always a risk of explosion, particularly gases. Harmful effects of products of incomplete combustion. If you burn a fuel, such as uh, natural gas, and there's not enough oxygen, then it can produce carbon monoxide, which is very poisonous. Instead of carbon dioxide, you can get carbon monoxide. So if the fuel doesn't burn properly, you can get some pretty nasty stuff given off. And there is pollution, okay? Pollution from soot, uh, pollution from, well, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, but also, if it's something like uh, oil or coal, a fossil fuel, which contains sulfur, then oxides of sulfur can cause acid rain. So, pollution. So, we can compare the energy content of fuels by measuring how much heat energy a certain amount of fuel gives to a certain amount of water. So we know how much fuel we've used up because we weighed our spirit burner before and after. We can work out how much energy the water gains if we know the mass of the water. If we know the volume of the water, then we know its mass. And we know the temperature rise of the water. And we know something called the specific heat capacity of the water. This is the energy needed to raise the temperature of a kilogram of water 
by one degree centigrade the specific heat capacity of water. You'll be given it in the exam. And you use this equation, E equals MC delta T. He's that new DJ rapper guy, MC delta T. Okay, E is the energy given to the water in joules. M is the mass of the water. Now, I'll show you in a minute. You can do it in kilograms or you can do it in grams. Uh, we said the specific heat capacity of the water. If we're doing the mass in kilograms, then it's 4,200. That's joules per kilogram degree centigrade. That's probably what you'll be given in the exam. You'll probably do the mass in kilograms. You can do it in grams and use 4.2. To raise the temperature of a gram of water is 4.2 joules to raise it by one degree. And then delta T is the temperature rise of the water. Delta, this triangle delta, means the change, the change in temperature, the temperature rise. Here's an example. The temperature of 100 mils of water rises from 20 degrees to 34 degrees centigrade. How much heat energy has been given to the water? Pause the video, have a go. The answer is, there you go. E equals MC delta T. I'm doing the mass in kilograms. So 100 mils is 100 grams is 0.1 kilograms. So I'm using 4,200 for the specific heat capacity. And my temperature rise is 14. So my answer is... 5,880 joules or 5.88 kilojoules. Okay, so as I said, 100 mils of water is 100 grams is 0.1 kilograms. The value of C you'll be given in the question, the 4,200, and then the temperature rise. That's pretty obvious. So we got 5.88 kilojoules. What we will be asked to do, probably what you will be asked to do, is to work out the energy released per gram, and then from that, how much energy is released per mole. So we're working out the energy per mole of the fuel. Now, one mole of ethanol is 46 grams. You should be able to work that out. The molar mass of ethanol is 46. Yeah, one mole is 46 grams. Now, if 1.2 grams of ethanol were burned, how much energy did each gram get? Well, that would be 5.88 divided by 1.2 is 4.9 kilojoules per gram. Then how much energy would you get from burning a mole of ethanol? Well, if it's 4.9 kilojoules per gram, you would multiply that by 46. And that would give 225 kilojoules per mole. So that's how much energy we would get according to our experiment from burning a mole of ethanol. If we go on Tinternet or look up in a data book, okay, that says a reference on the internet says that the energy content of ethanol is 1,367 kilojoules per mole. It's an awful lot more than we got why do you think we got a much smaller value than that? Think about it. I'm not going to tell you. It should be pretty obvious. Now, look at this table and remember this pattern. These are some different fuels. And you'll notice that the different fuels have different numbers of carbon atoms in their molecules. Uh, the methanol just has one carbon atom, atom ethanol has two, etc., etc. And then the energy released in kilojoules per mole. Okay, we've, we've already talked about ethanol, but can you see what the pattern is? The pattern should be pretty obvious. And can you explain that pattern? 